welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stanley Tan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. We're continuing with the theme of Washington Wine Month. March was the original Washington Wine Month. They now have August, which I've gotten behind a little bit, but not as much as March, because I really don't think we need two Washington Wine Months. One's enough. We're, we're doing good with wine. We get big scores. You know, we, we, not me. The winemakers in Washington State. I live here and I'm very proud of our state by the way and what we do. I did an episode, uh, my last episode I asked a couple of questions and I have the answers. You probably already know the answers but remember we tasted a Barbera from Washington State. Outstanding Barbera. And I asked where is Barbera famous from? I mean where do they grow it mostly? Where do we hear about Barbera the most? Uh, where is it known to be grown the most? And that would be uh, in Piedmont, Italy, where I'm headed soon. And then the other one was Tempranillo. I said, where does, uh, well, Tempranillo comes from a lot of different places, but where is it most famous from? And that would be Rioja. They do, uh, all the Riojas are Tempranillo based. So there you go. Those are the answers to your questions just in case you were curious. We're doing Syrah now from Washington State, and I just think there's a couple of grapes that I think excel in Washington State, Merlot and Syrah. And one of the reasons Syrah does so well, we're on the same latitude as the Rhone Valley in the world, and that's where Syrah does fantastic, is in the Rhone Valley. So it makes sense that we would be able to produce some fantastic Syrah. Syrah suffered a little bit, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Australian Shiraz kind of tanked after a while, and all of us wine guys finally helped everybody to understand that Shiraz is Syrah, same grape, just a different name from a different place. In fact, some of the wineries in Washington State, and it kind of pissed me off, started calling theirs Shiraz. But that's how big Shiraz was a few years back. But it fell off the map. It's hard to even sell any Shiraz anymore, especially when you get up in the upper price range. And so Syrah took a little bit of a hit. I also think that with Syrah sometimes, uh, because of the style it is made in, can vary quite a bit. And a lot of people just like to be able to go to a wine and know what they're getting, pop that cork and go at it. That's why Cab does so well because everybody really kind of knows what a cab is going to taste like. You don't get a lot of surprises with cab, but you can with Syrah. And then a lot, of has to, a lot of it has to do with wood treatment, barrel treatment, that sort of thing. And therefore, some people maybe shy away. I don't know, you let me know. What do you think in the comments? Why do you, do you like Syrah? Or if you don't drink Syrah, why don't you drink Syrah? What, what stops you from doing that? Is it what I said? Is it something else? Let me know. All right, we're going to get started right off with the uh, Helix by Reininger. So Reininger's a winery. They have a Helix line. Uh, this is a 2012 Syrah, Columbia Valley. This rolls in at 15, $15, excuse me. Uh, Reininger is actually out of Walla Walla, but he has this label. This is what you call the cash cow because his wines are a little more money. His Reininger line, that is. So the fact that there's a 12 around um, shows you just how much Syrah suffers. Let's see what we get on the notes. I love Syrah. It is so uh, fantastic with food, a uh, great burger wine, great steak wine. Um, you can have it with uh, lamb. Sometimes it works really well. Let's see what we get on the notes. Now this is a 12, okay? So we have a wine that has seven years going into seven years on it. A little challenged. I'm not getting a lot of, I get a little dried cardboard. Just call it like it is. I, I say dried cardboard a lot because, you know, I, work in, I, I worked on Night Crew for 10 years uh, at the store I'm at now where I'm the wine specialist slash beverage manager. And, uh, I just remember that dried cardboard smell when you walked into the warehouse after a big load of groceries came in. But super challenged. I'm not getting a lot off of this nose at all. Maybe a touch of... Um, a 
Touch of nothing. <laughs> okay, let's see what we get on the palate. That's kind of disappointing. Holding up pretty nicely for the uh, 2012 for a $15 wine. I get a lot of uh, blackberry, boysenberry, with a tar, like it's framed by tar notes, big time. Smooth, smooth tannins. Extremely savory, a um, little bit of tobacco on the backside. Um, I mean, $15. I don't know if you're going to be able to get the 12 anymore. I might still have some at the store some of the 12 at the store. Uh, I think it's lost a little bit of its thunder, just a hair, still holding up nicely though. Uh, still good acidity in there, which I find quite interesting. I mean, a $15 wine, nine years old, that's pretty impressive. I'm impressed anyway. Ten hit of cherries coming through. I like the savory element of this wine. Um, I like the boysenberry cherry combination. I like the earth. I like the tar. I like that tar that surrounds it. Nice soft tannins. Good acidity. I mean, it's not going south yet. I think it's at might be at its peak. Maybe just just past its peak, perhaps. But I'm still going to go. I'm going to go C plus B minus. I think that's a solid uh, Syrah. I know that uh, Chuck Reininger is a great winemaker, and I like his wines a lot. So whether you get onto the 13 or 14 or 15, wherever your store is at with these wines, I think that we're seeking out. And you'll probably find a, a really solid wine for 15 bucks. Let's move on. This is the 2013, one of my favorite vintages in Washington State, Ryan Patrick Vineyards Reserve Syrah Red Heaven Vineyard Red Mountain. This rolls in at $30. And for those of you, my homies out there, I am selling this... Uh, for a little bit less than that at the store. I think I have it down to $19.99 right now because I bought a crap load of it a long time ago. It's still holding up well. Let's see how this one is doing. This is the same vintage I have at the store. Ryan Patrick was bought out by Mill Brandt Vineyards a few years back. I'm not sure who the winemaker there is right now. Could still be Jeremy. Uh, let's see what we get on the nose. It's a little challenge as well. I'm really, uh, really disappointed in the aromatics so far, both of these wines. Kind of a, a brooding um, uh, black boysenberry, blackberry. Oh, there we go. A little bit of perfumed. Uh... Yeah, I get a little bit of blueberry coming through on the nose, which is very good. Uh, blueberry is a common aromatic in like Cote Roti. Uh, you get, tend to get a lot of blueberry up in those, and that's in the northern Rhone. Hits of tobacco coming through. I like. Actually, it's coming out now. Let's see what we get on the palate. Not super impressive with this wine. Tell you the truth. I always tell you the truth. A little bit uh, on the um, one-dimensional side, I get a, kind of an interesting like uh, vegetal component that hits right on the mid palate, but I'm not getting a lot of expression of fruit on this one. It's very savory, like the first one, but it lacks dimension, less complexity.
some solid tobacco notes on the finish, but overall just really kind of disappointed with where this one is going now. Uh, I think when I first tried it, I thought it was pretty good. That was a couple of years ago. Um, I'm not I'm not happy with where it's going now. Uh, 2013, I thought was a great vintage. So far, most of the wines I've been tasting from that vintage have been very good. Um, nah, nah. Yeah, even at 19 bucks, even at 20 bucks. Yeah, don't waste your money on that one. I am going to go C minus, C minus on that. Uh, there's certainly, yeah, maybe even closer to D plus. That's how I feel about it. It's not. It's not poorly made, it just doesn't have anything. I, I'll stick with C minus. I think it's unfair to go down to the D level because you would, you would uh, expect some flaws in it. There's no flaws in it, it's just there's just nothing there. I mean, it's, it's not good. It's a lot. That was disappointing. I was kind of excited about that. Okay. Now we're going into the big boy territory. I may have reviewed this in the past on my YouTube channel, but hey, what the heck we're doing? Sarai, to go downstairs and see what I had in the Sarai land. This is the, uh, looking for the vintage. 2015, uh, Efeste Jolie Bouche, Boucher Vineyard, Sarai, Yakima Valley. This rolls in at 45 bucks. So uh, the winemaker for Charles Smith moved over to Efeste, and uh, he's the winemaker there now. Uh, I'm not sure if this is his or not. And the winemaker from Efeste went over to Charles Smith. And so they just swapped, just like that. Mark Fiore is the winemaker now, cool guy, golfer. Let's see what we get on those. Now, right off the bat, this is so typical of Washington State Syrah this kind of bacon fat, tar smells that come through. Lots of bacon fat, a little bit of plum, a little bit of boysenberry. Tobacco, there's a lot going on on this nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. That's what we're talking about. This is what I have always felt Washington State Syrah does so well with good acidity, good structure, a solid tannins but smooth, a little bit of grip on the backside. Uh, I get uh, a little bit of the ham hock, a little bit of bacon fat. I get a little bit of a, a blueberry coming through, uh, boysenberry plum notes coming through. This is a solid solid wine and it's still youthful i mean there's a this thing this baby could easily age easily age 10 years i'm just saying easily 10 years just those savory notes on the mid palate going into a little kind of tarry tobacco thing on the back end a little bit of dirt I like this wine. I mean, it's it's meaty. It's meaty on the finish, which is really cool. Reminds me a lot of some of the Northern Rhone style Syrahs that are out there. St. Joseph, as, as an example, it has kind of those qualities. Uh, not quite as old world as those, but definitely kind of has that type of meaty, boysenberry plum, ham hocks, bacon fat but very balanced with acidity and everything's kind of there and well structured and well made and well integrated. That is a great bottle of wine. Just saying. Solid, solid effort. I'm going to go AA plus on that. That's definitely a classic example of what Syrah can do in Washington State. There you go. Thanks for taking a little bit of time out of your day to uh, watch. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you feel so inclined, please hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel.
hook up, hook up with me on Twitter at Stan the Wine Man and Instagram Stan the Wine Man. I'd love to share pictures with you. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely. <laughs>